Hello everyone. Welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting um, a more of a Christmas scene today. Now this painting, I just want to start out and let you know that this is a more advanced painting. So I will be taking my time to try to show you how to create the details that are required for this picture. But before we get started and before I reveal what it is, why don't we just talk about the equipment that we have. Off to the side, I have a cup with some water in it. At J. Robinson Art Peel Off Painting, we like to provide you with two brushes that you'll be able to paint the projects with. We also like to say that if you have your own brushes, please, please feel free to use those for your own level of comfort. Today, I'll be using my own just to help expedite the painting process. As I'm saying, this is an advanced painting, so it's not difficult, but it is somewhat challenging. We like to provide you with a plastic apron, a spatula to be able to remove the peel. We give you a paper towel. We also suggest that you have more. We give you a piece of palette sheet, so the, the glossy side where you can put your paints on. And then we provide you with the paint packets. Why don't we just open those now and start laying out our paint colors so when I reveal the painting, we could just get started. What I have for you today is white, red, yellow, blue, and a burnt sienna or a raw sienna. Let's just start putting out the colors. I'm going to start with a little bit of white. We like to try to provide you with a lot more paint than you'll actually use during the project. But please remember, don't squeeze it all out because some of it you could use for later. And if you need more, you could always squeeze more. So we're going to start with the white. We're going to squeeze out a tiny bit of blue. Blue is a very powerful color, so we won't be needing a lot. But we will be using some in the background. So I'm just going to squeeze out just a smidgen. I won't even be using that much. Then I like to put out a little bit of yellow. And we're going to need a small amount of red. We're going to also need a little bit of this raw sienna, or burnt sienna. Then I just got to get one more color. And we're also going to need a small amount of raw sienna. Now today's project is for a general population. I mean, we all could paint it, but today we're actually going to be painting a dreidel. The dreidel has a blue background, some makeshift star dots, and some star shapes, snow shadow, and then the dreidel itself with the lettering. The difficult part is going to be trying to create these shadows so that you get the shape. Because what we work with is our 8x10 canvas with our peel on it. And the first thing we're going to do is paint our background. So why don't we get started with that? Again, we provide you with brushes, but I'm going to be using my own today to help expedite the painting process so we can get into the details of the dreidel itself. I'm going to start with a little bit of white. I'm just going to start splashing our color into the background. And I'm going to be painting around the dreidel because today we have lettering that we're going to be painting before we get started with anything else. So I don't want to paint inside here. And I want to teach you how to just control your strokes to stay on the outside. Now from this, I'm going to take a tiny, tiny amount of blue. And I'm just going to mix that into the paint. Because what I'm looking for is a very, very, very light blue color. And that's why I put the white first. So that I can look at the tonal values as it changes so that the blue isn't too strong. I'm gonna come down to about right here on the painting, and that's gonna be where my background stops, and then my snow's gonna begin. Now you can mix a little white and a little blue together just to help speed this process up. And if you see, if you come too strong with the blue, 
you could always just add some white to it and hence the white that we laid out first helps diffuse the color a little bit so that it's not going to be too strong. See? And just keep working it around. Come to about right there and stop. That's good. Just make sure you get to the edge. Try it again to stay away from the lettering. Because the idea is just to work nice and carefully. You don't have to be in a hurry. Because it's a video, you could always pause, rewind, replay, whatever it is you think you may have missed. Or to get a better understanding of what you think I might have said or what I am doing. I did get a little color in it. I'm probably going to regret that. So I'm going to try to fix that before I move on. I'm making sure that I put my color right up against the peel. That's important. So when I peel it off, it's totally covered. Okay, that's sufficient. That's good enough. Clean off my brush. Ring the bell. This is me knocking it from side to side. Wipe the brush on the paper towel. We'll pick up some white. Now I'm going to put the white down, even though the canvas is white, but I want to cut an edge line like that. That's going to be my snow. Then I'm going to take the brush and just very carefully, going from left to right, put in what I'm going to call some snow. Show you a little trick. And then we'll be finished with this part. Now because I got some color in my lettering I just want to go back and reestablish that because I want it to stay white in this particular case yellow is going to go here red is going to go here but if blue is in there it'll turn green and that's not what I want okay now I'm going to take a very light amount of blue and I'm going to streak some of that into this snow color just to give it a little variation see just a little bit of blue in there just a small amount like so. Maybe I'll go a little bit stronger so you can see it. There. See? Just streaking in some blue right into what I'm calling the snow area to help make it kind of a cool tone. Even though it's white with a little tiny bit of blue, it gives off the feeling that it's a little icy. And that's more what I want. That's fine. I'm going to clean off this brush because we'll be finished with this one for the day. Ring the bell, wipe it on a paper towel. Now again, I've provided you with a nice pointy brush, but I'm gonna be using this one, and this is all we're gonna do. We're gonna take and twirl a brush, and we're just gonna make a series of dots, some random dots. These are gonna act as some stars. You can spritz this, but because we're just trying to keep it simple, I'm just going to use the brush and make some dots that are going to represent really snowflakes. I keep saying stars. i got to stop saying that. They're actually snowflakes today. So I'm just making some dots. See how I'm just randomly moving them all around the canvas. Just to give some indication of something falling. There, that's a lot. That's nice. Now you could also take the brush... And you could just draw in some stars just to give some variation. And I like to just call these like X's over X's. See that? Let's do another one. You do a line. You do an X. You do another X. There, look at that. Just add a few of these just to give the picture a little bit of a pop. They just add a little extra something to the painting. Maybe there's another one over here. And I'm doing these random, so I'm not... Asking you to place as many as I am or exactly where I'm putting mine. You make yours as many or as few as you like. Anywhere that you like. And at any time you feel you have enough, you can stop. I think that's sufficient. That's good enough for me. Okay. Now I'm going to take my flat brush, which again, we provided you with one. Just going to take this brush. This right here is going to be a yellow letter. So I'm just going to take the brush and just paint right over that hole where the letter shape is and just give that a little yellow value. 
We're going to be peeling this off momentarily and you're going to see what happens with that. Moving right along. Clean off the brush. Now we're going to pick up some red. Take some red and just paint this, this last one. It's very pretty red. Nice and rich. I like that. And again, I'm just filling in the open space, the shape, where this, where this lettering is. There. That's sufficient. Good enough for me. I'll clean off my brush. And now we're going to do the peel. But before we do that, I like to take just a small amount of white, maybe a touch of blue, introduce a little red, maybe a little sienna, trying to make kind of a grayish value. See, just a little bit of a grayish value. See, that's good enough. I'm going to take that and right on the bottom here, I'm going to draw kind of a circular shape like this. And like this. This is just going to represent the shadow. Just going to fill that in. For the dreidel. Just a shadow. You can make it bigger if you like. I think this is sufficient. You can go back here if you want. Make it, make it a little bit larger for you. Just, just so you can see it. Better. Maybe go back here a little bit. Get whatever's left. Like that. There. That's good. That's just going to be a shadow for the dreidel. That's all. It'll, it'll pay dividends later. I'm just going to soften it up a little bit. Make sure it stays rounded. There. It's good enough. Clean off this brush. Now let's peel. Take the spatula, grip it like this. You can go anywhere. You can go over here if you want. You can go up here if you want. Anywhere that you can get under. But once you get under, what you want to do is just pull at a 90 degree angle. And just remove that shape. The rips, no problem. You just go back in. Take up the rest. That's all. And there. Now we have our dreidel shape. And this is where the painting gets interesting. The color we're going to be using primarily here is this sienna. This very light one right here. So I'm just going to take it. I'm going to make a shape right here at the top. And then I'm just going to pull that color down. Now for this, you can paint the entire dreidel by blocking it in this color first. And I would strongly suggest that you do that. That you don't worry about the shape of it yet. You just want to block in. So I'm just going to take this color and I'm just going to paint this shape. See that? But I could also show you a little bit of a trick. Because you want this to be as if it's a box shape. So you have to like just pretend in here. Say the shape of the dreidel is like this. Let me just show you what, what a drawing. See that? So now you've identified the top of the dreidel. This would be a point angle here, and then it gets round again. So why don't we do that shape? See that right there? That's important. Get that out of the way, and then fill it in, and then we'll come back and reshape it later. Okay, so at least you have that, see? Now by taking just a touch of this darker sienna and a little bit of this color, we're going to start establishing this side. So now that we have this color a little darker, why don't we just introduce that over here so that it would be more like the shadow. Now we're really going to start to define the shape. See that? And then we're going to come down here a little bit. Just up near the top. See and we know that this point is separating the two, so why don't we just do that? Why don't we just come straight down like this? And then we know that the bottom spools off a little bit, so why don't we just take 
and kind of create this shape over here, this shape over here, and now we have our dimensions. Now we can go back into just a regular light color and just continue bringing this down, mixing it at the top a little bit, and go right around our lettering. And this is what makes this a little bit of an advanced one. You have to have a bit of a steady hand to control going around the lettering. Else you're going to end up losing it. So it's not like it's hard. I promised you it wasn't hard. But this one just takes a little bit more of an advanced ability to see and control your hand movement and your eye coordination. I know, it's not like it was extremely difficult, but trust me, some people have a little difficulty in navigating things of this tiny nature. So I'm just trying to say, while it's not hard, it really isn't easy for everyone to do, and I get that. So I started out by prefacing it, saying that this one is going to be a little challenging. That was the word I used. Not hard, but challenging. See? See? And now by making sure we've defined that other side, let's just create there. And see, it requires you to use your own initiative to create the shape to give it that dimension. So let's continue. Let's just continue pushing in this color very, very lightly until we get the shape that we want on this side. Then we'll, we'll, we'll work our way around to the others. But we've, we've done fine in, in establishing the shapes that we want. Now we just got to be careful, as I was trying to note, and paint around our lettering. This is where it takes the time, because this is really a simple, easy painting. I don't want you to be fooled by me saying it's an advanced painting. I want you to understand why I said that. So that you don't think that I don't care about people's abilities. I understand that some people have more difficulty with their control and their hand-eye coordination. And that's what makes this one a little bit more of an advanced painting. Because it requires you to use your own eyesight and hand-eye coordination to create this shape. But once you have it, the painting goes from advanced to very easy. See? There. Now, we pretty much got this one in. This side is almost done. We're going to come back later and we're going to enhance some of those shadows. But we've established where we wanted it. And, and that's important. This, this little area right here definitely distinctly separates the top from the side. And that's what we wanted to establish. There. I'm just going to try to quickly block this in. There. See? Done. Now. Now we've established this line. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit of this darker value. And just reestablish this line. One more time. Okay? Because now I want to come on this side. But before I come on that side, I'm going to take a little white. I'm going to mix that into the color. Because now I want to play with a different value. You see that? By lightening the value, you not only changed it from what the top looked like, but you changed it from what the left side looks like. So now this right side has a much lighter value. So maybe there's more light hitting this particular side of the dreidel. And by mixing the same color with white, We've established a different value so that it looks different to the eye, which gives it a little bit of a lighting technique. Now, for this one, because the red is a little wet, you want to be very, very careful when you come near. But you still want to take the paint as close to the edges of your lettering as possible. So let's take a quick look back. We have the natural tone. We put a little raw, raw sienna burnt sienna with the raw sienna, we put white and we've established an even different value. And again, this is truly what makes this an advanced painting is those subtle color changes, creating the shape of the dreidel 
with just paint, just colors. Just colors made those shapes have different tone values, which makes them look different to the eye. Because this color is exactly the same as this color, except there's white mixed in it. A little bit of white. Just a little bit. And that helps us to establish different shapes for our dreidel. How cool is that? That's a lesson in and of itself. That values of paint could help give shape. Because you can't tell me you don't see the top. You don't see this left side. And you don't see the right side. And you only see them because of the tone values. That's it. We didn't really do any lines. We just changed the tone values. And that's how you create shapes. If you were doing a portrait, you'd have a series of tone changes that would give the contour face shape to every face that you see. Look at that. Finish this. Now guess what we're going to do next. That's right. We're going to add this value to the bottom. So let's take a little bit of this rusty color, a little bit of this mustard color, and a touch of this blue. Just a smidget of this blue. Trying to get such a tiny bit there. Now let's go back again. Let's go to the rusty color. Go to the mustard looking color. And now we've established another value change. And on this value change, we're going to make this the bottom of the dreidel. Watch. Taking this color, I'm just going to drop it right in here. Look at that. Totally different color. Totally different value. But now this becomes the bottom of the dreidel. And by working the shape the way we did, we've given this dreidel a lot of dimension. We even started with a shadow on the bottom of the canvas. So, what have we learned today? Values can do a lot to change the shapes in our paintings. So we've learned that and now we can use that in any paintings we do going forward. So this dreidel, while it may seem basic and rudimentary, brought you a lot of lessons in values, shadows, color, shapes. See that? Look at that. How cool is that? How cool is that? Doesn't the dreidel look a little rounded now? Doesn't it look like it, it can actually spin? Like it was flat. If you remember when we first peeled off the peel off, it was a very flat shape. But because of your superb painting skills and the use of peel off, you now have a dreidel that looks like it can actually spin. You can continue with some of this color right here and put a shadow, watch this, you could top this top part off by rounding it off like that and putting a shadow that runs down on one side. Just one side of the top of this dreidel. And look, you've given it the little top part. You could even come here and put a little shadow right at the base like that and then soften it out a little bit just to give the stick. You see that? You could take a little bit more of the blue into that mixture with the rusty sienna. Get yourself a nice dark tone, but brown more than blue. And you can make a cast shadow of this, like that. And just make this area dark as if the stick or the top part is casting a shadow at the top of the dreidel. You could take that same color and add a little bit of value to the very, very bottom of the dreidel that's just hitting the table. See that? Just play with that for a second. And lo and behold, your dreidel is done.
Now the next color that I'm adding is just to give a little bit more shadow value right here. Just, just, I just want to add a little darker value. Wipe the brush off. Use that little bit of color and pull it down. Just to give a little bit more shadow to the top little corner area of this side of the dreidel. And soften that. And believe it or not, your painting is finished. Well, as always, I hope you had fun. Thank you for allowing me to come and paint with you. I had a good time. The dreidel is actually finished. It's a very nice painting. And you can always enhance it more, soften it more. You can know you can continue to add and blend color here and soften color there till you're satisfied with it. That's the beauty of painting. You you have the tools now. You have the know-how. Now you can just take it to any level that you want. But as always, subscribe to our YouTube channel, J. Robinson Art, so that this way you can get any new videos that we post. And please check out peeloff.com. You can get the website off the back of the canvas. There's an ad on the back. Go to that site and you'll be able to look at all of the different packets that are available. Well, thank you for painting with me. I hope you had a good time. Bye-bye.